going to call this the most boring Blender tutorial in the world. Alright guys, how's it going? Now, if you've seen the very first image, you've taken a look at it and thought, I could make that. This is probably not going to be the tutorial for you. It is very basic, it is very beginner level stuff. Let's not run on anymore, let's quickly get started. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a text object. So I'll go to add, I'll go to text. Now in order to edit the text, we need to tab to go into the edit mode. And I'm just going to type in something very generic, Blender, how original. I'll tab to go back into object mode. With the object selected, I would like to center this. So what I can do here is I can go to object, set origin and geometry to origin. That'll put everything bang in the middle. Now personally, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the default font that comes with Blender. There's nothing wrong with it. I just like to change it up. So I'll go to the green A, I'll go to font and then I'll go to the folder options. Now I've just downloaded one from the web. You can grab any one that you like. Let's load this up and I'm happy with that. Now the next thing I need to do is convert this from a curve to a mesh. So if I go to object, convert, I convert to a mesh. Now the reason I'm doing this is I want to kind of manipulate the topology. If we take a look at the wireframe by pressing Z, it's not the best in the world. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to press A to select all of the mesh. And I'm just going to do a very basic extrusion, something like this. So I'll use the extrude tool or E in the keyboard. We'll drag this down and I'm happy. I'll quickly go back into object mode. I'll go into the top view. And what I'll do here is I'll add in a remesh modifier. Now when it comes to doing text, I probably recommend using something like Illustrator or something that gives scalable vector graphics. Doing it in Blender, probably not the best method, but it leaves us one advantage, we can actually animate things. So I'll go to the modifier and I'll go to the remesh modifier. I'll then go to smooth and I'll put the tree depth up to something like 8. Now we won't see all of the letters and the reason for this is remove disconnected is automatically ticked. So if I untick this, we'll get our text back. If we take a quick look at the wireframe, it's not the best, but it's a lot cleaner than what we originally had. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to quickly apply the modifier. I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to press Z and go into wireframe mode. I'll make sure I have the select box selected and I'm just going to select just underneath this E, so somewhere round about here. Now there's several ways we can move this. We can use the move tool or we could do an extrusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the move tool and I'm going to drag it down to somewhere that I like, somewhere like that. Now just as a quick tip, if you press G to grab, you can then use the arrow keys to nudge the topology. So this is me pressing G and then up and down, left and right. So that's just a very quick tip. So let me quickly undo this so we get back to the original state. I'm pretty happy with that, I quite like the format. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go back into object mode. Now obviously we're recreating some sort of album cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly drop down a plane so we have a background object. So we'll add in a mesh and we'll add in a plane and we'll press S to scale this up. Now I'm directly in the top viewport so you can either press 7 on the numpad or you can come up here to the gizmo and you can press Z. Oh, flip that about. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press Control, Alt and numpad 0 and that should put my camera in position. Now it's a bit close so what I can do is I can move this up and I don't really want to render out an HD quality render. I want to change this into a square format so what I can do here is I can go to the output properties and I can change the resolution on the X to something like 1080. Let's quickly jump back into the camera view. It's a little bit far away now so let's drop this camera back down and get a nice position. Let's press 0. That's perfect for me. Now one thing I recommend you do is you kind of play around with the format, the scale, kind of put your own stamp on things to be honest. Personally I think this should maybe be a little bit lower, so I'm going to quickly jump into edit mode and just bring it down just a little bit more, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now there's a good chance the plane is intersecting with the text, what do I mean by this? If I press 1 to go into the side view, you can see here the plane is just slightly above the text. Now I'm going to put this underneath. We should, in theory, make it flush, but I want to kind of create this kind of dramatic lighting effect. So let's quickly press 0 to go back into the camera view, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly drop down another text object, just something to kind of fill in this negative space. So I'm going to go to add, I'm going to go to text, we'll do this quite quickly, I'll tab into text mode, I'll just write my name. Pretty happy with that, that is my name, yep. Let's go to object, again, object, set the origin, geometry to origin. I'm just going to scale it in a little bit by pressing S and I'll put it up here in the top third. That looks good enough to me. Ah, that's fine. Back into zero to check the camera view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the render viewport. Now, 
don't worry if it's pink, it probably won't be pink on your side. The reason for this, personally for me, if I go into the shading tab, let me quickly join the areas together so you don't see my copyright work, I have an HDRI image and it's not been referenced by Blender, it's got lost somewhere, the path has been screwed up, there's a good chance I've probably deleted the file. So what I can do here is, in the world, I can go to the folder icon and I can select a new HDRI map. Now I do apologise for the messy desktop, Blender Royale last night it always ends up in chaos. So now I have an HDRI map, I'm pretty happy with that, let's go into layout and let's see what we're getting, not bad. Now I've left the default light that comes with the blender scene, you can delete this, but it gives me this kind of nice fall off shadow. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the back plane, let's scale this up a little bit so it's a bit more even, and I'm going to add in a new material and I'll just make this very dark. Now because I have specular on the material, we're catching this top light, so we get this kind of nice fall off effect. Now if I put specular down it kind of dies out, but I like the way I'm getting this kind of shadow. Now if you're happy with that, hit F12 and away you go, you're happy. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a gradient to the text. So I'm going to select the blender text, I'm going to add in a new material, and then I'm going to quickly jump into the nodes by going to the shading editor. Now I'm already in world, so I'm going to make this the object, because obviously we want to work on the object. Let's join these areas together, gives a bit more space. And I'm going to create a very basic gradient map. Now what do I mean by this? The first thing that I need is a colour ramp node, so I can press shift and A, I've S to search and let's search for colour ramp. I'll take the colour and I'll put this into the base colour. The next thing I need to do is add in a texture coordinate node because I need to say, look, this is where you're going on the mesh. And I want to kind of separate the channel, so I'll talk you through this. So let's find a texture coordinate node. Let's add in a mapping node. There's a good chance you already know about this. It's pretty fundamental these days. One thing I recommend you do is install Node Wrangler because all you need to do is press Ctrl and T and it'll set everything up for you. And I'm going to generate this and plug this into the vector. I'm then going to take the mapping and I'm going to separate the X, Y and Z channel. And the reason I want to do this is I want to control the gradient. So let's look for a separate X, Y and Z. Let's take the vector and where would I like to put the gradient? Probably the Y axis. So let's take the Y and let's plug this in here. And you'll notice if I quickly jump back into this. Let's go into the top view, it goes from dark to white. So let's quickly go back into the shading view. So let's quickly go back into the shading view and let's add in a little bit of colour. So I can hit the plus sign here on the colour ramp, one, two, three, so I essentially have five. Now I don't want to spend time trying to get these perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this drop down menu and I'm going to distribute the stops evenly. That just means everything's nice and even. So. One thing I do recommend you do here is go into a website that generates colour palettes so you get this nice fluent. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it to be honest and it's going to be very rough so I'm going to go into the pinks. Let's go into another kind of pink. Let's make it brighter. Let's move it slightly into that colour. Let's move it into the oranges. Let's brighten it up. Let's move it into a blue and then a green. So we're kind of using most of the colour palette here to be honest. This is going to be a hack it. <laughs> and we end up with something like that. Pretty cool to be honest, let me select this object one more time. But now I'm not happy with the way the pinks are at the bottom and the green is at the top. Here's a quick tip, what we can do is we can go to the colour ramp and we can actually flip the colour ramp. And I recommend while you're there is maybe change the easing function or the interpolation between the colour ramp. So you can do an ease, you can do a linear, you can do a constant, if you do a constant it's kind of solid lines, so keep that in the back of your mind. I'll probably just keep it in ease and I'm fairly happy with that. But before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the colour and I'm going to plug this into the mission and get an emission strength of 1.5. Why do I want to do this? Well, if I go into layout, I go to the render properties, I can add a little bit of bloom and it gives me this kind of neon effect. Now, I can play around with the threshold, the way it knees, the radius, intensity, stuff like this, but I'm pretty happy with that. And we now have this kind of retro album cover. You might want to put the mission up ever so slightly in the shading just to kind of make it blow right out. Something like that. One thing that I do recommend you do while you're here is select your name or whatever and add in a material to that. Now if you just want to make that white, put the specular down, happy days. Now one quick tip before I disappear, what I recommend you do is take a particle emitter and emit from the text and what you can do is you can kind of copy the colours over on the particles and it gives it this kind of vibrant effect. And that has been the most boring blender tutorial in the world. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, you know what to do, take care.